And we are recording. And I wanted to say uh, welcome to PacWest Bigfoot, you guys. Um, first and foremost, just real quick, let me grab it. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Some of you have, some of you haven't. But uh, next month's giveaway from FolkloreSupply.com. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> it's an awesome shirt, isn't it? Um, also, it comes with a matching coffee mug that way you can fill it up with some of this right here some of that sasquatch coffee i know i look like i'm marketing everything here but i don't get paid to market this stuff the the uh uh the fans of ours in our community here over at folkloresupply.com have given us this to to give away to the community so you guys can actually go over there and check out what they've got going on they got some great stuff it's pretty awesome so there you go. But we're doing an interview today. That's what we're doing today. And we have some, um, I'd say, I think it's about three real interesting experiences and sightings from Crystal, who is um, a native Alaskan, if I'm correct. Crystal, you there? Yes. Awesome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank this you. This is cool. This is cool. Um, well, you know what? Let's. Um, I want you to kind of take over here and let you uh, tell us of your experiences, um, where these experiences happened. You know, yeah, to mention. You know, if you want to keep anything out of it, that's fine. We get it. Um, that's okay. But uh, whatever you can tell us, um, that would. Be awesome so why don't I let you you take it over and you can start with your first um, experience or sighting uh, we'll start right there all right thank you um, <clears throat> so when I was I grew up uh, in the Eugene area so and my dad I wouldn't call him necessarily an amateur astronomer but he would build his own telescopes and mm. he's a uh, private airplane mechanic and I thought everybody's dad knew how to fix everything and build telescopes so <laughs> I was about five and so it was just I'm the oldest so it was just me and my mom and dad and so if you are familiar with any big cities at night they have oh, yeah. a glow so to get out uh, and see the planets or the stars and <clears throat> constellations we would often go out in any of the logging hills mm -hmm. so it was a summer's night just like any other night they loaded me and the telescope up <laughs> and some snacks <laughs> this is eugene oregon so, right yes eugene oregon oh, yes that's just and, about uh, 80 so miles away from me yeah 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 and uh so we went out um like i said i don't know exactly it had to have been towards the east uh because then we weren't going towards the coastal range so we were just outside of town and it's late, you know, um, in the summer, you have to wait a little bit longer for it to get dark. So 11, 12 ish. And so we were, I grew up in a, um, we had a 1971 red Volkswagen camper van, the best thing ever. So, you know, you sit down, yeah, of the My Volkswagen van, you know, we're up on the, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, so it's pitch black, you know, it's just us up there and the lights. And so we get to, I'm not sure what they're called, but it's the like kind of a turnaround point. Mm -hmm. And there's just kind of at the top of a hill and it's all um, just kind of low brush. And so my dad's driving and he puts the van in park and then the lights go off and then, you know, it's just dark. And it's just, you know, nice and quiet. And so our routine was, you know, we get out, I get to hop out and then let dad take the telescope out and whatnot. But so mom gets out of the car, I'm sorry, out of the van. And she's like, hey, dad. And, you know, they're talking outside and she's, and they're like, she's like, can you, do you smell that? And he's like, you know, and she's like, Shh, listen, and they could hear some rustling and twig breaking or whatever in the in the dark you know you can't mm. see and um the only kind of flashlights my dad brings are they have a red filter on them so it doesn't mess with your eyesight when you're yeah. in that complete darkness so and then so i'm, I'm ready to hop out she's like no <laughs> she's like ah, dad let's go <laughs> so she, so we didn't go there. So I'm like, oh, what are we doing? What's going on? I had no idea. So 
that was, I was, I, I remember that. I remember having that door slide open and just looking out. I remember it being quiet. I don't remember anything else, but I was, it was just different because it was out of our usual routine. Mm -hmm. I didn't smell anything. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything, but that was, uh, one of the, probably the first stories, um, when I was a teenager, I'd ask my parents, I'm like, cause you know how it is out here in the Pacific oh, yeah. Northwest, Bigfoot, you always yeah. hear about it, you talk yeah. about it. And, uh, so actually when I ran for Miss Indian World, it's basically the equivalent of, I'll just say white people. So we call them Gussuck. So I'll just refer to the Gussuck <laughs> in uh -huh. Yupik. That's what we say. Um, it'd be the equivalent of like Miss Universe. Okay. So, and it's like a royalty pageant and it's down in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Well, we had to have a, um, kind of like a, a, the talent. So it would be the girls would do dancing or I did storytelling. So that's when I asked nice. my mom. My favorite. And our, yeah, well, yes. And so my story was about wild people. And I think that's mm -hmm. how we kind of got on that subject. And she told me about that uh, incident so long ago. So I would tell you the story about the wild people, but it's not the right time to tell the story. <laughs> so, oh, that's okay. That's okay. Because so uh, like time. I said, we're going to, yeah, we'll have you back around the end of summer, maybe beginning of fall and talk a little sure. bit about the, the historical stuff that you you know about that'd be awesome for sure yeah so that was my I don't my first experience sort of I mean it was my parents can recall it you know mm -hmm. quickly and they don't call it an experience they're just like we don't know what it was we didn't know if it was a Bigfoot or a bear mm -hmm. or but it was something large and smelly so yeah which usually leads to get out of there and <laughs> you don't want to mess with whatever yeah, it is. You know, anyway. I've been around bears. I've been around mountain lions, um, even in a, in a rehab situation where they were, you know, we we're helping ones that were hurt or, you know, stuck in the wild or something like that or whatever. Uh, you'd have to be real close to them to even get kind of a smelly smell to an animal smell. To oh, them. okay. Yeah. You have to be pretty close to a bear or a mountain lion to really get that kind of smell from them. If you're standing back and that thing's like 20, 30 yards, you ain't smelling anything. Not, not a human being. We're, we're not smelling that, you know. Um, oh. The only thing I could smell at that distance is probably my grandfather's old cologne. <laughs> right? And apparently Bigfoot. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> old Spice and Bigfoot. <laughs> old Spice and Bigfoot. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so. Well, so growing up, this will lead into my second story. Um mm -hmm. I was, you know, some of the elders and whatnot, I was uh, taught, you know, they're nothing to really be afraid of. So I just kind of was like, okay, that's good. Um, usually, if any of them are messing with you, um, throwing sticks or pine cones, mm -hmm. it's it's like a youngin. So just like oh. our kids could be mischievous, so can they. So um, we were, every year, um, we have a group that goes and um, on the tribal canoe journeys. So if you mm -hmm. Google that, you'll see lots of images and nice. see different places where the tribe hosts. And so it's a kind of a reconnecting to the traditional highways of your ancestors. Mm -hmm. So we're on, you know, canoes and, and you need a ground support for the tents and the food and the cooking. And so I was on ground crew and we were up in British Columbia on the island, mm -hmm. uh, Vancouver Island. Am I, is that right? Yeah. I and so. uh, we're, okay. <laughs> we're, we're on the, uh, the most North we went was Port Hardy. So we weren't far from there. So, mm -hmm. um, and I can't pronounce the name of, the First Nations owned uh, kind of an RV resort, um, but I included that in our, our email. So if you wanted to put that up to, yeah. for somebody to get a location on where that was, okay. but it's just like out here. I mean, it's, it's thick, thick yeah. bushes, um, evergreens. I mean, it's just lush and beautiful there. So um, and you just add that to the water. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing. So we're there and it's 
the further north you get, the more remote and less population, um, the further apart the cities and towns go or villages. So we were pretty far north, and so we were there for a couple of days, and so our camp was set up, and we were just, it was kind of a lull time, so I took a break, and I tried to not bother anybody with my cigarette smoke, because it's just a bad habit, and so I'm <laughs> off, yeah, uh, by the bush line. And these bushes, and they're bushes, but they're taller than me. So, and then there's, you know, really tall other sorts of indigenous trees and whatnot. And so I just, you know, it's the birds are out and it's just a beautiful day. You can hear the breeze and the, you know, the sunshine. And, and we have all different ages with us. So, and so some of the, like my nephew, he's about nine. And so, I was just smoking and it was just me. There was, I was in an area where there was just nobody. And, and all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I see something and I, you know, look down to my left and I was like, what? there's a pine cone. Like the, I caught the end of the bounce, you know, when it uh, falls on the ground. And I was, and then I was like, well, that's, I didn't see any other pine cones first. I look up, is there any, you know, ever, you know, uh, evergreen trees no and then so I it clicked in my head like oh oh that's a big foot so I'm like <laughs> oh okay the teacher and me because I teach the native language I went and grabbed I said nephew nephew come here and he's like okay what yeah he's you know I said oh, there's a big foot out in the um beyond the bushes I mean these are tall I mean and they're th yeah. thick wide yeah. I it, it just chucked it so I was like they like sweet things I didn't have any chocolate and I was like they like chocolate I don't have any chocolate do you have any chocolate and he's like no <laughs> so I was like <laughs> okay well um I have a granola bar that's sweet right and he's you know oh yeah okay and so I was like will you help me do you want to help me uh just throw it over in the bushes in the area where I thought it came from and he's like okay so and like I said, I mean, everybody knows about wild people or Bigfoot or mm -hmm. Sasquatch, <clears throat> excuse me. And so he's like, oh, yeah. So I took it out of the little green wrapper and I broke it in half. And and then so I'm like, okay, here, you, you know, you throw it as far as you can. And he's okay. And so he chucked it over there. But that was that was it um, for that. And we just kind of went on our way. So <laughs> huh. Interesting. <laughs> So that's what I was told, you know, if they are doing that, you know, just not to appease them, but just to like, oh, okay, acknowledge them. I, I see you. You're mm -hmm. just, you know, being a little bit naughty and being playful or whatever. So here's mm -hmm. a, here's a treat. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I never questioned it, you know, when my elders told me, so. Awesome. Are you still there? Okay, there you are, there you are, all right, <laughs> awesome. And so there was, um, was there a sighting, I think? No, I think, goodness, I have never seen one. Oh, the third okay. one I is one. when okay. I, no, the third one at home is when I heard it. Oh, okay, I, okay, that's what it was, okay. Go ahead, oh, tell us about that. Oh my gosh, okay, we, <laughs> yeah so you know we live pretty rural and uh you know some of the closest cities are about 30 miles to drive to to get to any decent you know large store or whatnot so and you know when I first moved out here coming from Eugene it was a adjustment but now I absolutely love it so we live on about 10 acres and it's there's a lot of um our closest neighbors are what you would might consider like a city block away mm -hmm. so and we're all just kind of spread out like that so it's it's nice you know we're yeah. up you can't see our house from the road and you know we're pretty tucked in here and we like it that way so <clears throat> um every year there's a competition in powwow and so i mean lots of people come in from canada from across the united states and 
families come in. It's, you know, family reunions often happen during that time. And there's a lot of, um, give my uh, father's best friend, um, for like almost three decades. Uh, she is, um, part of a tribal council here around the Cow Creek area in Roseburg. Oh, yeah. I and so yeah. I've been, to, I've actually been to like, I don't know, probably seven or eight powwows. And yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it, it was pretty interesting. I really, really enjoyed it. It was pretty cool. So I've been around the community for quite some time. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, if you haven't been to one, it's, it's a little bit hard to explain because they're all a little bit different. But yeah. I mean, there's like, yeah. So there's something for everybody. There's, you know, food and people and you can watch. The dance. artwork is insane. I love okay. it. The artwork is just insane. As a matter of fact, one time when I was at one, there was one older lady who had a little stand and she had a bunch of uh, wild people art, basically Bigfoot art, which was really interesting. I was like, what is this? She, oh, was, wow. she was like, Harry man. And I was like, what? She's like, Bigfoot. Yeah. And I was like, oh. I've actually <laughs> seen tracks and I had an experience once and she was like, well, be careful when you're out there, blah, blah, blah. Started uh -huh. sharing that with me. So it was pretty cool. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to keep an eye out for that, that person. Yeah. Um, she was just a little lady. It was like almost two decades ago. It was, <laughs> she might not be, around, uh -huh. but she oh, probably but is still, but it was cool. Yeah. She had like little necklaces and little purses and she had like a beaded thing and it had the picture of like a, I, it was hard to make it out at first, but it looked like, like, like a person standing there, you know, except for this person, like no neck, just thick uh -huh. thing you know i was like she's like hairy man oh wow <laughs> she kept saying hairy man <laughs> i was like oh, yeah <laughs> just like that yeah. Hairy man. <laughs> yeah. so you heard you heard a, uh, oh geez yeah so you know with people coming in and whatnot we had you know our house full and it was wonderful and we were surrounded by you know our friends and family and it was just a busy weekend and it was wonderful and it was it's in august so it gets pretty warm out here um even though you know we're on the coastal range it sometimes doesn't cool off in the evenings but uh so yeah. it was like the day after uh the work week had started it was like the monday and it was in the evening and uh so it was just me and my daughter here and my husband had to go somewhere for a work uh like training or a conference and then so it was just you know between all that like hustle and bustle and the you know fast paced weekend with all the company and just visiting and you know good times it was just still and it was nice and quiet and, and we have um some horses so sometimes you know when i'm outside and go have a cigarette um you can hear them or you know the crickets and whatnot and frogs and and so just like any other time i grab my my cigarettes and my lighter and I put my slippers on and I stepped out the front door and I always have the porch light on and my daughter's sitting in the living room and she's watching tv and so I was just like oh it's just nice and I was just like oh it's so quiet and then so I light up my cigarette not maybe 10 seconds <clears throat> after I did that uh, David I don't even know how to explain the force of the I don't even screaming hollering doesn't even do it justice I don't even know how to describe the the sound and it and I couldn't see anything but it sounded like it was 20 yards for me I mean it was it froze me in my tracks and I just was thinking Oh no, I'm home alone and <laughs> you know, I'm the grown up. I have my daughter to protect and I'm just like hi and I was like I didn't even I just I, the first things that came to my mind when I heard that sound was like just pain or anguish or uh, it was So it just, was like a like a like a roar maybe. A roar would be the best was it high pitch, low pitch? Was it like 
it was low. It was not okay. So we have cougars around here, and yeah. so I, I've actually never heard one, but everybody keeps saying, "Oh, it sounds like a woman just went nuts, went mad." It wasn't high pitched, and it was low, and I just my brain couldn't put a a a description of what this what it could be. You know, but you um, could feel it. Oh. <gasps> Um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm just right on my porch and it just sounded like you get, when you live somewhere, you get used to your surroundings. You can tell mm -hmm. <clears throat> like when the horses are talking or whatever, you can kind of hear the direction or where they're at and whatnot. And yeah. Yeah. I just knew this thing was coming towards me and, and we have a big, big field. Um, and then a patch of trees in front of our house um, and for most of the rest of our property. But I, so I, I, I have a little um, thing I throw my cigarettes away and I didn't even want to take one step more to put it out. I was just like, it was like just danger. Get behind the door or get in the house. And so so and I'm like I have to stay calm I am the mom I'm the one in charge and so I just literally dropped my cigarette I don't even know if I put my foot on it or what I backed uh into the door and opened it from behind and slowly opened the door went in locked it <laughs> and then I, I oh my daughter's sitting there and I'm just like calmly went to each window, closed the blinds, shut the door, walked, you know, try as nonchalant as I could be to walk to the back door, sliding door and lock it. And I threw the back light on and I just was shook, but I, I couldn't mm -hmm. be shook in front of my daughter because she already is a little bit scared of even going out to the, to the cars when it's dark out and I don't want to do anything to uh, to add to that fear. Yeah. You right. Wanna, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dang it. My husband, why can't you be here? <laughs> <laughs> like the good Lord says, don't provoke your children. It's like, <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yeah. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, I like my dad. He was like, "Hey, go get me that over there in the dark, please." Dad, and, yeah, and he'd have his friend waiting in the dark for me. <gasps> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was it, it was yeah it was interesting growing up. We would we would actually live at campgrounds up uh, out of town because town that I lived in was a pretty rich town and it, it could be a little unaffordable sometimes. And so we'd save money by staying up at the lake. And mm -hmm. I was pretty much left to my own devices up there. So sometimes I would camp by myself, me and my cousin or somebody would camp by ourselves, you know, a mile away in the woods. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So I've heard some pretty creepy stuff out there at night. And nowadays I'm not as, I'm a little bit more weary, especially after my own incident, finding footprints and then listening to my mom talk to me about, you know, I've heard some pretty crazy screams and yells and hollers <gasps> around that area. And, <laughs> And so it was pretty, yeah, today I'm a little, I'm like you, a lot more skeptical. It's like, it's like uh, the elders telling you, you know, oh, you know, the little ones being playful, that's fine and dandy, you know, and, but they didn't say go up and interact with them. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that I don't get. I mean, I still think it's, it's, it's a wild animal and just to go up and start interacting. So when this thing was screaming at you, and you felt like it was coming towards you. You could maybe hear it rustling through or walking through. Okay. So I heard, not that I can remember, <clears throat> excuse me. I didn't hear any rustling. So to me, that meant there, that I, I, after I knew it wasn't a cougar, I'm like, that's a, that's a wild person. <laughs> so because there was, I didn't hear tree breaks or snaps or twigs and stuff. It, I knew they were, he was right. Or he, I don't know why I call it a he, but he, it's a he, <laughs> I think, was right in the field right next to our house. So, but, so here's the crazy thing. So this happens, and about a year or two later, I'm talking with my coworker. And, you know, just, it, it's no, not it's not no big thing, but I mean, it's common knowledge. 
and it's uh, if you mention it, it's not a hush hush. It's a oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I have my own. You know, you, you share mm. experiences and whatnot. Yeah. So, so <clears throat> my coworker lives. Uh, her and her family live about a mile down the highway, and so I'm telling her this randomly, <laughs> and she goes my husband around we're trying to like nail down the time and i was like yeah it's right after powwow and she's putting the pieces together because she was in her bedroom reading and her husband barges in he's like did you hear that he's like no (laughs) what (laughs) so he just was you know wide-eyed and just like just kind of hyped up and like oh my gosh how you know what and she's like what what's going on what what did I? What am I missing? And so he described the exact same thing I did. They live on the opposite side of the highway, so where he heard it would be on my side. Um, but like they have the, I don't know. It's a, I don't know how many acres. I'll say about thirty um, across the field. It's just a field, and uh, he heard screaming mm-hmm. from over on that side. <clears throat> so we figure it was the same thing running in that direction i don't Mm -hmm. i don't uh, it's just so i wasn't the only one that heard it but (laughs) oh so it happened that was later or it was around the area yeah no that was like a mile down the road and we but it was like a year or two later i was talking with my friend and we we kind of calculated it out to be around it had to have been the same same night, same creature, um, because he had heard it, and it sounded just like how I described it, and I, yeah, so, yeah, it went, I don't know, I, I wonder, is it okay? <laughs> it oh, yeah, like, I mean, is it, is it, is it coincidence that maybe around that time where those particular happenings in your culture is, is going on, um, is that maybe a certain season that something's been going on in your culture for a long time? Is it some sort of gathering that's been happening for a long time? And has this thing been maybe drawn in by that and a part of that for a long time? Uh, who knows? You know, who knows? Right. So, yeah. Cause people yeah. camp out at that uh, powwow and I'm sure there's, you know, oh, there's yeah. garbage bins and I mean, I'm sure that attracts that's another thing. animals and whatnot. <laughs> The more people, the more garbage yeah. there is around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially so, after those uh, Green Earth meetings. <laughs> it's like this is the <laughs> place in the world afterwards. It's like, whoa, do like they know there's long. garbage cans here? Um, right. Yeah. But um, yeah, so, so I know that was your third one, but uh, you had mentioned there was some – you know, maybe it's, we've got a few minutes more here. We've got like 10 or 15 more minutes. Would you like to maybe talk a little bit about, you know, a little bit, you know, you talked a little bit about uh, beforehand, uh, mentioned about some of the stuff around the Colville area, some of the, just a little bit of the history there, maybe some sort of interactions or whatever. Maybe kind of lead Ooh. us into that and then we'll, we'll wrap that up uh, maybe at the end of summer, but maybe you can give us some sneak peeks, maybe a couple little, little pieces here and there. Well, I have a more, um, one of my girlfriends that I grew up with in Eugene, she's from La Push. So I'm going to, I'm going to take, take you to the, to the coastal side of Washington. And, mm-hmm. uh, so she would, when I would spend the night at her house one time, and this always in my head, cause we go up um, when we go on the tribal, uh, canoe journeys, we go up through the Puget Sound area or yeah. just those coastal near Bay and, um, nice. La Push and you know, all those different areas. So, um, it always stuck in my head and I, you know, I get to see her every once in a while, but she said, you know, we're teenagers and she was over back home and she, it's like ghost stories We're we're laying in bed and the lights are off and we're just talking before we go to sleep. And, and she said that, um, she goes, yeah, I don't know again how we got on the subject, but, uh, Bigfoot, she said, yeah, my grandpa would sit out in the back porch and talk to him, you know, and I'm <laughs> wow it's dark i can't see the expression on her face i'm like what do you mean talk to them she goes well not i said like they're right there like he can communicate with them she goes no (laughs) and so i was like well what do you mean she said well 
she thought the same thing, but you know, her grandpa's like, no, I, I sit out there and I talk towards the woods and I, I talk to them. And so I was like, Oh, okay. And so he talked at them. <laughs> at, yeah. yeah. There you go. You talk at them. So, and then the other incident, Oh God. Did they ever talk back? You know, I wish I could, I'll have to ask her next time. I'll be like, okay, That'd now great. you got to tell me some more stories. <laughs> Nice. Or to call you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And but this thing, so there's different creatures, you know, in in different territories, I guess you want to call it. But mm -hmm. so you have like the wild people, and then you have like the little people, um, and then there's other creatures that are. I don't want to call them evil, but they're. <sighs> I guess maybe the equivalent for Gusak would be like the boogeyman or something, you know, something mm -hmm. that you don't want to encounter. So she said that she was, um, she was babysitting her cousins and uh, she was up, you know, back home and she was bas babysitting her cousins because her mom and her grandma and her aunties, they went to bingo. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, nice. yeah, so it's dark. And she's, you know, trying to clean up and take care of the kids. And, and you know, she, she asked one of them, she's like, uh, I, I need you to go, you know, do the dishes. And the kid's like, oh, I don't want to. And she's like, you go do the dishes or the, and I forgot what she called it. I don't even think she said the name, but she's like, that thing's going to come get you. <laughs> and the little kid's like, whatever. And then, so um, a little bit later, you know, I think she ended up having to do the dishes and then she heard this, this scratching and she looked out the window and she's like, there's a, that thing out there. And I was like, Oh, you know, she's telling me and she's, she got so scared. She took the, her cousins and, and she's like, come here. And they ran into the bedroom, into the closet and they sat in there <laughs> and that thing was trying to get in the door and, Oh, <sighs> and, Oh, what yeah, it look it was like. Oh, I don't know. I or I put that out of my head. I don't know. <laughs> and so <laughs> she said that when her grandma came home that she was mad and she's like, You don't ever say that and call those things, they'll come. So and that's you know what she did. That's what she threatened her cousin with and said, you know, if you don't listen to me, you know, you don't go do that, that thing is gonna come get you and it it heard its name and it came. Oh wow! So interesting, creepy, creepy, <laughs> right? Creepy. Yeah. Ooh. So no good. Oh no. wow! So yeah, actually, up around Eugene, they've had. Um, I was just south of Eugene. What's that little town down there? Um, Oak Grove, or there's that um, uh, that reservoir out there. Burn Ridge. I don't remember, but it has one. Uh, they had a record-setting um, set of Bigfoot tracks out there <gasps> along the shore that one time. It was actually on Finding Bigfoot once and oh. uh, all of that. But one of the longest treks people have ever come across was right actually there. Came down from oh that across the road down the edge of the lake and along the edge of the lake through the soft mud. And it was there was something like 70 <gasps> footprints or something. It was huge. It was long. Wow. I think Cliff Berrickman and them got some casts out of there or whatever. It's pretty yeah. interesting. And that's just south of Eugene, about, you know, it could be 30 or so miles, you know, 40. Right. Oh, I'm going to have to look that up. I'm actually, I live in Roseburg now. I'm from Ashland, uh, Oregon originally, but um, I'm up here now. I know that Ashland, out toward between Ashland and Klamath Falls, is a pretty big hot spot. Um, but then there's also what I don't think many people under know about, but it's almost like a little Willow Creek, but nobody really knows about it. It's called Myrtle Creek. And it's just south to me about 11 miles. And that's where the Cow Creek is, the Cow Creek Indian tribe are from. Uh -huh. And um, I get stories from that area, even up to now, of people oh, talking wow. about crisscross branches and trees and, stuff that goes you know bump in the night out there um <clears throat> up that creek and up that way up in the mountains and the hills so you know oh, it's uh, a yeah. pretty pretty freaky little area i kind of like it i want to move down there <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm crazy like that 
Oh boy! Well, so, if I, another one comes screaming down here. I'll say, "Go see David." <laughs> nice. So, before we wrap this up, there, what's the what's the scariest, most frightening one that you've heard about um, uh, from where you, you know from your your family and culture? Um, maybe. Oh, my mom was telling me, you know, my um, my grand grandma lives up in our in our village, and you know, it's really remote up there. It's just, you know, if anybody's watched those Alaskan shows, mm -hmm. it's a little bit. Um, at least I can refer to them to tell people, look, you know, this is what it is like. It's bush, and it's you know, no roads in. You mm -hmm. get there by um, by air. And, the people uh, with the funny. tattoos that come down three underneath the lip there. Yes. yes what is that job. it's a woman's that's a woman's tattoo oh okay. um, for beauty yes oh, okay. and i'm looking into um actually i've got a couple friends that are trying to revitalize the uh traditional way of doing that and the practice and uh cool. yeah i'll have to share some information with you but that'd be great oh, that, it's great yeah because now that um you know Times are changing, and yeah. you know, so it's yeah. So, um, so there's a fish camp, you know. So for our subsistence hunting and fishing, a way of life to uh, feed yourself through the long winter, you know, you mm -hmm. stock up on your your salmon or your um, the food for your dogs, and if you have any, and um, so it's remote, and even you know, so. They're just scattered out um, along the Yukon River where the family's fish camps are from. So <laughs> grandma, she, my mom said that grandma was out there and I want to say it was just grandma. So she was out at fish camp and, you know, she's doing her thing and she goes, turns in for the night. But she had a dream that uh, there's a Bigfoot walking on the beach, like the little shore mm -hmm. of the river. And, you know, and then when she woke up and she went down to go fetch water for, you know, washing your hands or cleaning dishes mm -hmm. or whatnot, she saw footprints. So I was like, ooh, <laughs> she dreamed about it and oh, it wow. happened or it was like her intuition or something. I don't know. Oh, geez. Yeah, no, there's the scariest ones, David, I've probably heard are the ones on your show. <laughs> <laughs> All these oh, I'm telling you. Well, I have one that was kind of similar to what you were talking about, like like you hearing the screaming and everything um, with your daughter. Except for this was um, a woman and her and her little boy. Um, the dad was doing out doing something. I don't know what it was, but um, I'll have to go back through and look. But they didn't give me a lot of information on it, so I have to kind of create a backstory to this one because I just you know I'm creating the story around it, but just gave me the actual experience itself, but it, it, it did, it made a, a holler like scream and stuff, but it started doing it from around the house several different Ooh. times for like within a span of like an hour. And then all of a sudden, I mean, she started hearing rapping on, on the walls. And um, yeah. And then she, she actually saw it pass by uh, the, the, the uh, bathroom window when they locked themselves in the bathroom. And it passed by oh the bathroom and it was smacking the wall as it's walking. And so that's, you know, it was, it's a pretty long little experience, but I'm going to have to create the backstory around it. Cause I don't know where her husband was. I don't know what was going on there. Um, not much at least, <laughs> I don't think. Right, that's but it was pretty freaky. Most of the stuff that I hear is like, it, it's, it's just, it's, it seems to me like it's kind of like chance encounter. It's like wrong place, wrong time. Right, and you're dealing oh. with, you know, I think the reason that Native Americans call them wild people is because they look like they got features like people, man, like a monkey, you know, or a giant ape. It's got feet, you know. I mean, it's like evolutionists will be like, oh, well, you know, they look just like, you know, they got appendages like us or whatever. We all live in the same biosphere for crying out loud. <laughs> 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 We're gonna share the same DNA with just about everything. <laughs> So, uh -huh. right. yeah, somebody one time was like, well, then we might as well be rats because we share 92% of our DNA is the same as a rat. 
Oh, wow. 96% is a monkey. But that difference, that little 4% difference is like traveling from here to the outer rim of the Milky Way. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's a chance encounter with an animal that, uh, you know, I think that there's more encounters than we could even possibly count. I think there's some all the time, almost every day when people are out in the woods. I just think that these things are passing through and they're most of the time on you know they just they just walk on by quietly or they just stay still until we're gone because we don't stick around in a place too long right but you know as far as i'm concerned it's it's you know it could have been you know it was passing through you came home it hunkered down it saw you know someone leave and it's thinking everything's gone, but then all of a sudden it starts to, you know, a later on, a half hour later, it it starts moving around to head off again, but you come out a door. You light yeah. up a cigarette. You've got something there that in the dark, there's light and it kind of freaks it out. Chance Ugh. encounter freaking out a wild creature and that creature is all of a sudden going, you know. I, I, well, it did probably I did what it probably wanted to go away you know <laughs> it, it was probably wanting to head away maybe it was going to pass by or something like that and it's just it waited around too long oh, and you God. came out and it was just like I said half the time it's probably just chance encounter and at the same time it's just not in the mood for you you know yeah, it could yeah. be having a bad day it could be really hungry it could be uh, it could have been in the middle of hunting. It could have young around. I mean, it could be any, it's like a mama bear, you know? Uh, yeah. That's the whole thing about this. We, you know, we, we try to look at them as people. Some people do. And I just think that that, that gets people. And that's why you have 411. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's just not okay. Uh, you know, when you start, when I hear stories of like, hey, this certain area of the woods, as far as Native Americans are concerned, it's been kind of a, a sacred place but a place that you don't really hang out in too long then it's probably a place i'm not going to go hang out too long in now some people might go jump out there and go oh i know because it's the hairy man it's the hairy man <clears throat> you know what risk it yeah. all you want i'll stick around the outer parts with a parabolic mic <laughs> I'm yep, good. there you go I'd be, you know. and i'd be in the car waiting <laughs> there you go because no i'm not into that no no for me it's like i don't mind going out and do the research and stuff but i don't want to i'm not going to really put myself right in the middle of something that that i know i can't control um that's basically like suicidal <laughs> this is like new no. uh, -uh. Um, but i mean as far as i'm concerned i mean it's like you know i mean that's probably what it was it was just you know a chance and can maybe that time of the year they're moving through and maybe because of all the gatherings that have happened of your native, you know, peoples for such, for, for what, you know, 500, 600 years or so, maybe mm -hmm. they've had that gathering there for so long. And it does come through because there's food sharing and cooking and everything going on. And it kind of, it's just like any other animal. It kind of gets used to something. It gets right. used and to, Hey, there's food down. here. Yeah. And then it's yeah. taught to its, you know, uh, you know, meerkats teach other meerkats how to hunt. Dolphins teach baby dolphins how to hunt, you know, whatever. Right, Maybe right. that's what happens. So it's moving through. And just by chance, it hung out too long. It didn't get up and walk away soon enough. And you came out with a lighter, a magic <laughs> fire. <laughs> right, yeah. So, and then all no, of a sudden, no. you're like, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to die. So, yeah. But Here's on the um, the other part of the um, my grandma, my other grandma, um, you know, with the experience up there in Washington, uh, where they live, uh, it's like a triangular point, and where from a uh, what do you call it, watchtower, mm -hmm. um, and it they're, they're the eastern side of the state. So I'll leave you with this part of the Colville to continue for next time. But, uh, okay. um, so she told me that, oh yeah, her or, and grandpa said that, yeah, they like tobacco. And, uh, yeah. and I was like, they like tobacco. And, uh, she said, yeah, she said, yeah, this one time, you know, 
I was where they're having a sweat and she's leading the sweat and they're in the sweat lodge and that's a ceremony and for people, you know, who might not know who that is. And so, mm -hmm. and there's the grown men in there and they're, they're singing and they're praying and they're, and then, boop, 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 boop. and then, you know, kind of stop. And then they, it's, it's on like a, it's like a dome shape. So they could just hear this, go, 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 you know, on something beating the, um, on the sweat lodge mm -hmm. and grandma's like, Oh yeah, that's the Bigfoot. And then, <laughs> oh, they, got they ran out of there. Ceremony wasn't even done. And they're throwing cigarettes out on everywhere they can. They load up in the car and they zoom off. <laughs> they're all freaked out. And grandma's like, you gotta light it. And so she <laughs> took a cigarette and she lit it and she put it on a tree stump and she turned around and then, you know, she waited a, however long. She turned back around and it was gone. She's like, ah, those guys don't even know. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, maybe it's the smell. Like, what? Maybe it's so, the smell. I don't know. It took the cigarette, though. Weird. Something did. That's funny. Leave it to grandmas, <laughs> grandmothers. Yeah, they know how to take <laughs> folklore by the horn. <laughs> they do i'm telling you it's like yeah you run into a beast of the woods people you bring grandma <laughs> grandma takes it all on there you go awesome. i'm apprenticing to be an awesome grandma like the ones yeah. i have so wow. but yeah so that'll be the kind of lead into that but yeah I, yeah you know, yeah i can't wait to hear some of these uh stories from uh from uh, your culture and your peoples. That would be awesome. And then we can, uh, I'll get back with you in the next couple of weeks and we'll set up a tentative time for around uh, end of August, maybe beginning of September, heading into fall or something. And, and uh, sure. you can grab as many interesting little tidbits um, from your, you know, your guys' history and uh, share that with us. That would be awesome. We would love that. I, I really enjoy all of the, really cool little experiences and sightings I get in creating these stories around them. But I get all of that um, kind of inspiration from the Native American and their whole art of storytelling. Um, you know, I, I've always, I've always loved that. It's just been, it, it's, it's just great. <laughs> it's awesome. So it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a pretty, well, you're story. doing, you know, so you're doing a, uh, you know, a contemporary storytelling, but I mean, maybe your ancestors were storytellers. So, um, you know, well, you know, I study cultural anthropology and storytelling. Um, at first, it was how people communicated to each other. Um, it's how we took our fact-based history stuff and passed it on, and then writing came into the mix and whatever. But uh, yeah, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm taking that kind of storytelling art um that i i actually studied a little bit of that i really like to read about storytelling and how storytelling works with native uh, native americans uh and uh i kind of i kind of just brought that in here i was like you know what you always see that like little police report style bigfoot experience there's no real story behind it nothing like what happened that day what was going on in their lives blah 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 what led them yeah. to that lake that day what led them to go camping what what were they doing while they were camping what led up to that point and so you don't really hear a lot of that and so what i did is i like why don't i create stories around this for me and some friends of mine and i'll just put our story put it to some stories and so i did i put the backstories to the experiences and created a based on a true story story and so that's what I decided to do. And so it just kind of, it took a life of its own. And I don't know if you guys know, but I had to shut the website down for like two weeks because I had like 40 or 50,000 hits in a few hours and my hosting company wanted $1,500. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm not paying you $1,500 right now. No. Like, I'll just host these videos on YouTube. <laughs> so. There we are. Awesome. And uh, you still there? Yeah. Yes. It, okay. 
Must have timed out. So I'm sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. Sometimes it can be uh, the internet or something like that. So, but uh, anyways, want to say thank you so very much, Crystal, for being on here. And uh, give me just about a week or two. I'll get back with you. I'll keep your email here, and uh, we'll set up a time for end of August, beginning of September. And uh, I'd like to, you know, get about four or five awesome little, uh, uh, you know, stories from you and. Uh, and your people's history with um, Bigfoot. That would be so awesome. I think everybody here would love it. And I know they're going to comment on her. Yes, yes, bring her back. So it's going to be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's going to be really cool. So um, anyways, thank you so much for being on here. And hold on one second. And you guys out in PacWest Bigfoot land. Um, if you want to get in there and win like, you know, the mug and the t-shirt and the little giveaways I do every single month, uh, get over there at packwestbigfoot.com and, uh, join the clan and jump on in here. And, uh, pretty soon I'm going to be emailing you guys once a week to a reminder that the new encounter story is out and some other information, uh, as well to go with that. So I'll be starting that here pretty soon. So with that, thank you guys very much. God bless and hold on one second, Crystal. <laughs>